Following a 300 point reversal on the S&P 500, going back to Thursday of last week, stocks managed to put together a really good rally. But there's a lot of talk and a lot of traders that are still afraid that this might be still the beginning of a stock market crash. Now, what's it gonna be? Are we looking at a rally off of the lows today, back up to the all time highs? Are we looking at just more of a mere market correction? a stock market crash or somewhere in between with a stock market recession. This video is going to get into all of that. We're going to go over the technical analysis of all the major indices. And we're going to talk about where the opportunities exist and what you need to be aware of going forward and what are the near term risks about how far this market might tank before finally reaching a bottom. But first, make sure you pound that like button and subscribe to this channel so that you can get all the notifications of all my future videos and live streams. The S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000, they all had much needed bounces today. They struggled a little bit early on, but then all of a sudden they just ripped higher. The S&P 500 found support at the 4200 level and ripped higher all the way up to the 4300 before just settling a little bit below it. Is this gonna be the beginning of a rally of what we saw back on March 14th where stocks essentially rallied about 400 points off of the lows? Or is this just a dead cat bounce that's going to just give us a little bit of relief, a little bit of opportunity to get out of long positions before it continues to trend lower. That's what I'm going to get into. And I'm, we're going to get into all those charts right now. And first off, we are going to get into the S&P 500 using the SPY ETF SPY. Now, I've talked about this head and shoulders pattern for what seems like eons. It goes all the way back to August of last year, 2021. And it's kind of really confusing lately where you have this left shoulder right there, followed by a head. And then at first I thought this was going to be the right. And then we confirmed and we broke lower and then we just completely recovered off of those March 14th lows. But now it's starting to look like that wasn't the right shoulder, but actually part of that head pattern that was forming. It wasn't until we bought them in the March 14th lows that we started forming that right shoulder here. And here you go. We got the right shoulder. It's getting really messy because of this little area right here. And then the neckline, it gets even more messy. But when it comes to drawing the neckline for the head and shoulders pattern that confirms the pattern, I come up with a neckline that goes right above the closing price of today. So with the rally, we've actually managed to rally all the way back up to this neckline, but not quite break it. And that's right after we broke below the neckline on Friday. Now, last week, especially early on, there was a lot of talk about this inverse head and shoulders pattern that was forming on SPY. Yes, we have a head and shoulders. We have an inverse head and shoulders. They're exact opposite of each other. Inverse head and shoulders are more bullish. But that pattern is known void by my estimations at this point. Because if we are to bottom right here, it's going to be more of a double bottom at this point and not a right shoulder. So if we were to double bottom would be right here with the first bottom and the second bottom. But you can't really take it serious until we actually break back above those Thursday highs. And then the pattern itself doesn't even confirm until you break above the March 29th highs. But head and shoulders pattern aside, what I think we need to really pay the most attention to is what looks to be a declining channel that's forming. Now, if this declining channel is to play out over time, that's going to essentially mean that the sell off is going to last for a very long time because this is not what you would call a very steep channel. Yes, there may be steep sell offs inside of the channel, but ultimately its destination, it's going to take a long time to get to its final resting place. And right here, you have a really nice channel pattern that has emerged. So where I see the spy going in the near term, I expect this to be a dead cat bounce. Yes, we may rally a little bit more in the near term. If that happens, I won't be shocked because we are coming off of oversold levels in the very near term. But ultimately, I do think that we're going to come right back down and test this 400 area on SPY before we see another attempt at a major bounce in this market. And in the process, it's going to create new lows beyond the ones that were established in late February. Now, how about the Qs? The Qs also had the inverse head and shoulders pattern going, and it's also null and void. And if it's going to bounce here and it's going to go right back to all time highs, it's going to be doing so not with the inverse head and shoulders pattern, but with a double bottom, first bottom, second bottom, just like with the S&P 500 or SPY ETF. You also have a lot of resistance here at the 200 day moving average. That's this big white line here going right across. You can see that's been the turning point for almost every significant bounce so far this year. And we've tested it on four occasions and each time it's been met with sharp price rejections. But check this out. We have a huge support level 
that price is coming up on here very soon. We didn't quite test it today. We got very close to it, but that was not quite the test we were looking for. We'll get down to this 319, 320 level and then bounce hard from there. If it cannot hold that level and it cannot bounce, it adds huge validity to the same kind of declining channel that we saw in the SPY. Here's your upper channel band and then you got your lower channel band. In fact, I like the channel on the Qs much better than I like it on the SPY. And look, if this rally is going to continue on the Qs, there is a lot of headwinds it's got to clear. We've already talked about the upper channel band that's declining. It's got to break through that one first. Then it's got to break the 200 day moving average, which check it out. It is actually starting to move lower for the first time in a very long time. And then if it can clear the 200 day moving average, which the last four times it has not been able to do so, then you're looking at another level of resistance going all the way back to the beginning of the year, three layers of resistance that's tested. And we have to ask ourselves, can it break through all three of these layers of resistance and actually get back to all time highs? I don't think it can, at least not this point in time, not with the Federal Reserve looking to increase rates as much as 75 basis points per meeting, not with inflation the way it is, and not with what we're seeing out of earnings so far here with the first quarter. I think it's going to be very difficult and I would expect somewhere around early May to mid May that we'll see a test of this lower channel band. I could be wrong. This is more of a forecast. It's not a guarantee. I've been wrong plenty of times in my trading career, but it would make sense that this is going to be a dead cat bounce. Yes, we could rally a few more days. However, ultimately, I do think that we test this lower channel band before we get another significant rally out of this market. Now, the IWM chart, it's probably the most defined one out there massive bear flag pattern that confirmed on Friday. And that's where I got short on it. And, and by the way, just as a complete disclaimer, I am short on this market. I've been taking some profits over the last couple of days of trading, but overall I am bearish on the market. If the market wants to rally and it wants to go against my positions, I'm going to use risk management and I'll get out of, at the stop loss that I have set. But it doesn't do me any good to look at it through a bearish lens. The only way I profit long-term out of the market is by looking at it objectively whether or not that goes against my position or not, because being objective about what you're seeing on the chart is really what's going to ultimately pay off for you as a trader and sustain you long term. With that said, this bear flag pattern, it confirmed, it broke below it, but there's also the potential. We talked about the double bottoms on the SPY and on the Qs. You have a potential for a triple bottom on IWM. So if we just ignore this bear flag for a second. You have a triple bottom that comes right here. First bottom, second bottom, and then third bottom. Can it push off of this bottom support level and get back above this massive resistance level that goes all the way back to the beginning of 2021? This is going to be the resistance level that either makes or breaks IWM on any future rally attempt. Can it get back above it? Because if it can do so, it provides a huge support level going forward for it to continue its rally off of. This resistance level is massive. It tried to break it back in late March. It did it for a day and it completely fell apart and you have where we're at right now. Long-term target for the IWM takes us back to the weekly chart and you have a massive support level that goes all the way back to 2018. 165-ish is where I ultimately think IWM is going to go. Again, if I'm wrong, then I follow my risk management on the trade and I get out of the trade. I'm okay with being wrong. The ultimate question is, are you okay with being wrong? Do you have a risk management in play? Do you know where you'll get out at if the trade doesn't work for you before you ever get in? Those are the kinds of things that you should be asking yourself with every trade that you take. Where's your stop loss? What's your plan with the profits? Are you gonna take profits along the way or are you gonna get all in and all out of your trades? What is your position size going to be? Can you tolerate a lot of volatility with your normal position size or do you need to scale it back some? One of the things that I've learned with the market over the years is that when you start to get into these high volatility markets, there's a lot of times where the market will make you think the worst is behind you, that this is the time to be getting in. This is the time to be the hero and to buy stocks at the lows. When everybody's selling, you gotta be buying. But oftentimes when everybody's selling, there's a lot more selling still to go. And so the best thing is, is to not try to bottom tick the market, but to wait for the market to show you, hey, this is about as low as we can go. This is as far as we can go in terms of price discovery. Now we've got a bottom end, we've got a base, we're gonna start working off of that. And then you can start considering whether you wanna add a little bit of long exposure to your portfolio. But you don't have to get in at the very bottom. And the market likes to suck in the most amount of people in these kinds of market environments to create the most amount of pain. What creates a lot of panic selling? It's when there's a lot of bulls out there and a lot of retail traders 
that get the rug pulled out from underneath them because they thought the worst was already behind them. The market's been filled with one day rallies so far in 2022. If this is gonna go beyond a one day rally, make the market prove that to you. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you pound that like button and subscribe to this channel and click that little notification bell so that you can get notified of all of my future videos. Plus tell me down in the comments below, how are you faring here so far in April? Are you finding yourself buying the dip and getting hurt from it? Or are you still waiting to get back in because you're on the sidelines or maybe you're short on the market? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys and God bless.